Hello! And welcome. I'm Willie. And I'm Chris. And this is the first ever Raw Reaction video. So the show opened with the episode of Ambrose Asylum, on which Shane O'Mac uh, confirmed two payback matches, one being Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, and the other Jericho versus Dean Ambrose. Any thoughts? Well, you know that I'm a Dean Ambrose guy, and I'm thrilled that he's getting a show. And uh, even at the expense of Y2J, uh, you you think that I look like Y2J. He looks a little like Jericho, doesn't but he? I, I don't see it. I don't care for him that much. And I mean, Chris. he's a good heel, but <laughs> I'm more excited about the Zayn Owens match, which is out of character for me. But Zayn, I gotta admit, I didn't really care for him that much when I first saw him, but he's been growing on me. He's got a great move set, and I think that this feud with Kevin Owens really has the legs to go a long way. I just hope that they don't burn it out too soon. Well, I'm a little skeptical. I hope you're right. But uh, personally, I'm looking forward to the Jericho-Ambrose match because those are two of my favorites. I think um, Jericho really has the ability to potentially... Uh, he could take Dean to another level as far as his moves go because Dean has been a bit limited so far, but Jericho is the type of legend that could maybe help him with that kind of thing. Well, I I sure hope he can. Uh, like I said, I love Dean, but he's, he's a little stale in the move set. I think that they can definitely put on a great match. I really think that they should keep using Dean as sort of the can't-be-beaten-down type. I mean, I they sort of killed that a little bit for me with the Brock match not being as good as it could have been at WrestleMania, but... Just reel it down. Yeah, yeah, no weapons. Where were the weapons? Where were the weapons? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you have that Shano Mac still around? Oh, yeah, big Shano Mac guy. Here comes the money. Yeah. Hope you're still there when we go next week. Yes, we are going uh, to... So we're looking forward to that. Should be good. So next was a match between Chris Jericho and Sami Zayn. It was a rematch of their uh, match last Thursday on SmackDown. And uh, I'll have Chris tell you about that. Yeah, I, uh, I really enjoyed this match. I thought it showcased each Jericho and Zayn very well. Um, Zayn started off real hot. He hit his... Uh, what do they call it? The Blue Thun Blue Thunderbomb? Blue so. And then uh, a tornado DDT through the through the turnbuckle. That was cool. That was, Even you that was like probably that. the highlight of the match for me. And um, I really just thought that they, they put on a good show. It was enjoyable to watch. Um, that about sums it up. Although, Jericho with the eye poke, I am not a fan of. Uh, He's a heel, though. That's true. He, that's just being a good heel. You're that's right. Cut him some. Give him some slack. Although, whenever I say anything about Kevin Owens being a good heel... Because Kevin Owens sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right, so next was the semifinal round of the number one contenders tag team tournament between Enzo and Cass and the Dudley Boys. That's right. Um, as you, I'm sure you guys know, they've been feuding for a little while now, so the build-up to this has been uh, quite good. And um, the biggest part of the match for me was really Enzo and Cass's entrance because it just showed how over they are with the crowd, because if, if you heard it on TV, it was the sound was pounding, it was electric, uh, the crowd was eating it up, and uh, Enzo did an extremely good job as the main mic man for the tag team, he always does, he's quite a few funny jokes, and uh, the spelling out the soft thing is all, always goes over big for me. And it didn't seem like, I, mean, I know that it was taped, and sometimes, you know, on SmackDown they can pipe in some artificial crowd noise. You, they panned around the crowd, and it you could see that people yeah. were involved. It, it was wasn't, definitely, yeah, It wasn't it, fake. It was a genuine reaction by the crowd. They really were eating it up. It was a, it was a so pretty the match good crowd itself, there. Uh, was, it was pretty good. Um, Enzo and Cass came out on top, uh, and they moved on to the next round, where they'll be facing the Vaude Villains, which we'll talk about uh, in the next segment. But uh, anyways, they looked real sharp. Enzo was, uh, he was getting beaten down a little bit in the beginning, but managed to get over to Cass to uh, make a momentum-shifting tag. And then from there, they just built up steam and eventually took down the boys there. All right, so next up was a mic segment with Roman Reigns, who first delivered his iconic The Guy speech. And then... And then uh, AJ Styles came out, and they had a bit of a respectful talk about their upcoming match at Payback, which will be for the WWE Heavyweight Championship. And... Um, they went back and forth talking about how they've both been good champions in the past. AJ Styles uh, seemed like he was using his popularity to maybe try to get Roman some points because, uh, as you all know, Roman hasn't exactly been 
going over big with the crowd. They were cheering boring loudly for a long portion of this. Yeah. The guys really been dealt a rough hand as far as fan support lately, so I think they might be using AJ to try to boost him up a bit. But anyways, we'll see about uh, that. As AJ was leaving the ring, he is walking away. Uh, Anderson and Gallows, who showed up last week on... Uh, the kick from him in the Raw. head, and it um, gone pretty good. He was beaten down pretty good, and um, later in the show, there was a little bit of a segment where Roman seemed pretty upset about the whole situation, thinking that it may have been planned because AJ Styles and uh, Anderson and Gallows have a past of being good friends. Uh, yeah, they were the, the Bullet Club in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And uh, also, last week, um, when they made their debut on Raw during the first portion of the Tag Team Contenders Tournament, they uh, attacked the Usos, who are obviously Roman's cousins. So yeah, there is a strong argument for it having been planned, but uh, we also have a bit of an idea that maybe um, it wasn't planned, and the Bullet Club maybe in the future are going to turn on AJ, and this could turn into some kind of Finn Balor uh, storyline where he'll come up from NXT and create the Balor Club, which everyone's been talking about on uh, Instagram and whatnot for a little while now. So next there was a rare appearance from Fandango, and uh, he went up against the newcomer Baron Corbin, who, yeah, you remember, won the Battle Royale at um, WrestleMania. Uh, it was a pretty simple match, not very long. Baron Corbin used his signature end of days, and it seems like they're just trying to set him up as a big heel for the future. All right, so after the Baron Corbin beatdown of Fandango, um, we've got the New Day and Cesaro facing off against the League of Nations and The Miz with Maurice at ringside. Uh, this is obviously continuing the feud between both the New Day and the League of Nations, which is sort of fizzling now because the League of Nations isn't even in the tag team uh, contenders m match tournament. Um, but mostly it is continuing to heat up the rivalry between Cesaro and The Miz for the Intercontinental belt. Um, it was an average tag team match with eight people in it. Uh, nobody really got to show off anything. I mean, Cesaro did have one uh, cool uppercut train where he had the Miz in one corner and a member of the League of Nations, I don't remember which one, in the other corner, and he ran back and forth and uppercutted them, but it was pretty standard stuff. Uh, next, we had a Divas eight-team tag match, and uh, it featured a uh, heelish team of Charlotte, Tamina, Naomi, and Summer Rae, and they went against Paige, Natalia, Becky Lynch, and Sasha Banks. And uh, the main draw there was the portion between Natalia and Charlotte as they'll be fighting for the women's championship at Payback. And uh, the match actually ended with a submission by Natty on Charlotte, so maybe that's some foreshadowing to what could happen in the Payback match, but. Uh, we'll see. Charlotte seems to have a vice grip on the title. So next we had the other uh, tag team semifinals between the Usos and the Vaude Villains, neither of which we really care for very much. Personally, I think the Usos' uh, shtick is it's really wearing thin for me. It's a bit childish, and uh, they really don't have too much going on in the ring to make up for it. Uh, and I'm not a big Vaude Villains guy. Um, I mean... They might be better than the Usos in ring a little bit, but I, don't, I really don't care for the characters. I don't like they come out and it's black and white. I, it's just not, it doesn't do it for me. Uh, as far as the match goes, though, uh, it was not too many exciting spots. The um, Vaude Villains did their signature whirling dervish move. They wound up winning and uh, they'll be facing end zone cast in the final of the tournament. At uh, then we had another Apollo Crews match. We seem to be uh, having one per show these days, and it, uh, he looked real good. He's um, he's very good in ring, but his character uh, could use some improvement so he could reach his full potential. He seems a little hollow so far. There's really no purpose behind his role in the WWE yet, but hopefully that's to come because he's certainly got the tools to be a big star. Uh, so now we finally made it to the main event, which was a match between Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens. It was a pretty standard match. They really all, they, you know, we know their move sets, and they they basically scrolled through them. Uh, nothing too exciting. Dean uh, picked up the win against KO by countering KO's frog splash, getting his knees up, and then he dirty deeds them. Uh, but then 
Chris Jericho came out and code broke Dean Ambrose and left him in the ring, um, which is good for their their payback match, their rivalry that's developing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be a good one. Definitely looking forward to it. Um, it's tough to see one of my boys beat on one of my other boys, but that's how it goes. That is how it goes. Okay, so overall, it was a pretty good third Raw for Shane O'Mac. Um, he developed some rivalries well with the, the match selection, uh, which was good. Yeah, there were a few good matches. Uh, I know you liked the Zayn Jericho match. I did. Uh, I thought that each of them had some good spots in that, and I liked Zayn's uh, athleticism, his energy. It's kind of zany. Yeah, I'd zany. <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed the Enzo and Cass versus Dudley Boys match because personally, I just like to see the Dudley Boys lose. So that was, <laughs> and it was a. Uh, yeah, atmosphere is Thank you all so much for watching. This is the first of hopefully many more videos to come. Yes, uh, thanks a lot. We truly appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video from the Top Turnbuckle.